ओम नमो लोहे सर्वत्रिकावर्ती हरियंताण ओम नमो लोहे सर्वत्रिकावर्ती सिद्धाण ओम नमो लोहे सर्वत्रिकावर्ती आयरियाण ओम नमो लोहे सर्वत्रिकावर्ती उवज्जायाण ओम नमो लोहे सर्वत्रिकावर्ती श्रावण ओंकार बिंदु संयुक्त नित्यं धायती योगिन कामद मोक्षदम शैव ओंकाराय नमो नम नम समय साराय स्वानुभूत चकाशते चीक्षावाय भावाय सर्वभावाचिदे अनंत अनंत भाव भेद थी बरेली भली अनंत अनंत नय निक्षेपे व्याख्या सकल जगत हित कारिणी हरिणी मोह तारिणी भवाब्दि मोक्ष चारिणी प्रमाणी छे उपमा आप्या जेने तमरा कविते व्यर्थ आप जमती मई मे मानी छे अहो राज चंद्र बाल ख्याल नहीं पमताए जी ने स्वर तणी वाणी जानी तेने जानी छे गुरु राज तणी वाणी जानी तेने जानी छे ओम नम सिद्धेव्यो ओम नम सिद्धेव्यो ओम श्री सुधात्मा ने नम जय जिनेन्द्र टुडे इज अ मे इलेवंथ टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी मंडे एंड वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग अवर क्लास ऑन आत्म सिद्धि शास्त्र वी आर ऑन द फर्स्ट टाइम्स आ we are going in extreme microscopic detail because that stanza has so much more to offer amazing amount of information are loaded in that stanza simple two lines any normal young adult kid can sing it there is no language bar simple gujarati words anybody can sing and this one has given amazing amount of information tons and tons of information i mean you know we can keep on going on and on and on and on forever actually whole scripture of jainism can be included in this two stanza two lines only so that's why we are going in great detail on this one when the, when we go to second third fourth fifth whatever next stanza is coming thereafter then it will give a lot of kind of a help because we know this first stanza that what it tries to tell us so here we are uh, on the stanza without further delay i'll bring the slides and we'll start talking from the last time where we were left out so here we are <clears throat> so we are dissecting each and every word in a minutest possible fashion so we we talked so far je swarup samajya bina je swarup means we all talk about the soul as a substance and soul as infinite attribute and soul has a modes modes means change is occurring in the soul samajyamina means i was not ready to understand it was my own fault it was my own doing it was my own self willed nature that i did not bother to understand the nitty gritty thing over about, about this uh, uh, atma siddhi shastra then we just said because i did not do those thing okay sorry 
because I did not make my personal effort, my purusharth, that I end up getting infinite misery in my life. What's a misery? I have everything in front of me. Even I don't have to go to work. I'm at home, three meals a day I can eat. I'm taking enough rest and everything. Where is the a misery? You guys trying to make my life miserable by telling me that I, am, I have misery, I have misery, I have. Remember, the birth and death cycle that we go through, that itself is a misery. We don't remember our birth, but we have seen people dying in front of our eyes. With this coronavirus and everything, people die and even family cannot say goodbye to that patient. After the death, even the crematories are not available and all kind of miserable situations people are going through. So I have lots of miserable situations So I'm because I did not understand myself. Then Samaja Vyute Padanamu Sri Sadaguru Bhagavan. So today we will start from Samaja Vyu word. We'll start from this one and we'll just say, what does that mean to me? Over here it says Samaja Vina, means we, I did not bother to understand. And over here somebody has explained to me. I did not learn, and somebody taught me something over here. So two contradictory words in the same stanza. Samjavina means without making any personal effort on my part, I did not understand the reality. And then second line says, the one who explained to me, over here, I did not understand myself. Over here, somebody did not teach me. Or, or somebody taught me, let's put it there. Somebody taught me right now. So what is the right thing over here? Over here, we have to understand. If I am not ready to understand, if I'm not ready to learn, if I'm not ready to put my personal effort, I will not understand anything. What it is, if I have not made any effort to learn, a teacher in the class sees teaching selflessly. She doesn't have any affinity or, or uh, uh, um, uh, um, aversion for any children. She teaches them perfectly. She teaches them perfect. Only those who are ready, they learn. Those who are not ready, they don't learn. So, so the teacher is there it's just my my preparation my eligibility my personal effort that's there then and then i can understand so what did the samajya view what does that mean one who had explained to me means the one who had explained to me can be divided into several forms one substance cannot do anything to any other substance, cannot touch each other. This is the fundamental principle on which Jainism is standing firmly for several decades, several centuries, for time infinite in the past. It's an independence of every substance in the universe. I am independent. You are independent. All these matter substances are independent. This pencil is independent. This scripture is independent. Phone is independent. My glasses are independent. Everything is independent in this life. 
this is only the philosophy in this universe that it is telling me you know i may just have to unload one phone call quickly Pandit, hello 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 it's okay i'm sorry yeah there is this is only the philosophy in the universe that tells every substance is independent in this universe no one can do work for others wait a second wait a second wait a second i see a mother doing work for the kid i see a teacher doing work for the student i see a worker doing work for the boss i see a doctor is doing a treating a patient all this thing i'm seeing and you are telling that no thing nothing can be no nobody can help anybody else no substance can do the work of the other substance yes that's true this physical body and this soul have association extreme close association it's called ekshatravaga means they, they, they occupying same space point means if i have three bulbs in this room three different color red blue red green and blue and i put all the three bulbs on this whole room will be lighted with all the three lights every minutest part of this room will have a three lights represented if i put that one bulb out that light will go out from every for every corner of the house of, of the room means this red white and blue red blue green whatever the colors are they will occupying same space point but they will they, they will have their own independence they will not affect each other similarly this physical body and i am occupying same space point since time infinite but still physical body matter remains matter soul remains soul they cannot be, they cannot merge and in fact in the literature it says scriptural reference it says if one substance merges with the other substance then there's going to be vacuum will be created and ultimately there'll be end of this universe will occur but end of the universe has never occurred because all the substances they mind their own business they keep doing their own work and they remain independent no sub even the science has proven today substance cannot be created cannot be destroyed it changes the form water becomes vapor vapor becomes snow snow becomes uh, 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 snow becomes water water becomes vapor again so all the circle keeps on going but h2o molecule remains the same similarly all these as substances they will change the, the that modification but substance will remain the same one substance cannot do the function of the other substance in the second one every substance remain in his own self quaternary this is a new word coming and i'm going to throw some new words because that's what we are going to learn if tomorrow morning i tell you tell me about self quaternary you may not be able to answer me but repeatedly hearing that word it will make sense self quaternary means i am as a i as a soul is a substance this soul has a so many space point innumerable space point and that makes the boundary of the soul for example right now i my, me as a soul has a shape of a human being i will go to hell hell my my soul will have the shape of the hellish soul if i go to heaven it will have a heavenly soul shape if i go to some human it will be plant and animal kind of a shape so the soul remains the soul has a expansion and contractile property of its soul space point so that's why this soul will be in the ants life 
and it will be teeny tiny soul with all this infinite attributes. Or I could be a dinosaur and I will have that much expansion of the soul space point. So that's a soul as a substance and soul has a area. Substance, area, modification and attribute. Four things. Subst soul is a substance, soul has an area, soul has a, a modification, soul has an attribute. These four things are called squ self quaternary. Dravya, Chetra, Kal, Bhav. What does it mean? It means soul or any other substance will do, they have the influence only within the limitation of these four things. Soul cannot do anything beyond these four things. So that's why me as a soul has my self quaternary. You as a soul, you have your own self quaternary. This pencil as a matter substance, that matter particle has their own self quaternary and so on and so forth. And that's why my self quaternary means my area is cut out to work with this, this limitation. I can't do anything beyond my limitation. So that's very important. Another principle of Jainism to be understood because this is not been prescribed anywhere else. Each one has his own substance, area, attribute, and modes. That's a four, that's quaternary, four things. Every substance has those things, and they maintain their self quaternary forever and ever and ever and ever. Every substance has limitation to work within its own self quaternary. So I can't do your work, you can't do my work. But it is obvious right now that mother is raising the kid. Mother is feeding the child. If mother is not giving food, the child will go hungry. That's what we see. But in the mother's self quaternary was to offer the food. And the child's self quaternary was to accept the food. And two things are seen together. And that's why we say mother is feeding the child. It is like Eight o'clock morning, school bus comes, and eight o'clock morning, Johnny comes out of the house. So somebody looking from the from their window, they said, "Aha! Uh -huh. Eight o'clock sharp, child comes. Eight o'clock sharp, school bus comes. Child is there. That's why school bus is coming. Or other way around, school bus is there. That's why child is coming out of the house." No, they both are independent. Yes, eight o'clock morning child comes out. Yes, eight o'clock morning school bus comes. Not necessarily true day in and day out. Today the child forgot his lunchbox or something and he has to go back. So he became late coming out. Or other side of the coin, the school bus was coming and at the traffic light, there was a, it got stuck for a while. And so school bus came late. So they both are a mere relationship. Similarly, every universal substance is, they merely are related to each other. It appears, relation appears. They both are independent. So that's what Jainism says. Everything is independent and one can. So now, knowing that one, Samajavyu means uh, there is a Sadhguru, the, the learned teacher is there. And he explained to me, is it true or not? If this is true, for example, that there was a uh, 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 the, the learned teacher and that's why I end up learning. So, to learn a teacher want to teach everybody. How come whole universe does not learn everything? Because everybody has different capacity to understand. 
So, samajavyon, then why is this word Srimadji put it in? You mean he did not understand this, all this self quaternary and everything? Oh, come on. The, the, we have a, our intellect is so limited and we are arguing hopelessly, senselessly. He is an enlightened soul. And when he obtained enlightenment at that time, omniscient Lord, Holy Scripture, and enlightened true teachers were present in the form of instrumental cause. And that's why, that's why the knowledge occurred to the self, but knowledge occurred because of self only. So other person's mere presence was there. A water is there and a fish is there and fish is freely swimming in the water fearlessly. Fish is swimming in the water because water is there. No, because fish has an internal capacity to swim. That's why fish is swimming. Water is simply a vehicle. On the same water, if water is a reason for swimming, then when I put the rock, how come the rock sinks at the bottom of the lake? Because rock has a capacity to sink. Fish has a capacity to swim. Water simply a vehicle, instrumental cause. This word will come repeatedly instrumental cause. It's called nimit. That word will come very often. So get familiarized with that name. So, but if the water is not there, fish cannot swim. Take the fish out of the water, fish will die. So water is a must for fish to swim, but water cannot do anything. So what a, what a uh, amazing thing. Thing, his, his presence is important, but can't do anything about it. This is what Nimit can do. Presence is important, can't do anything about it. So we'll just see, we'll look further and see what it says again. In fact, the teacher teaches and the student learns is not a true sentence. Wait, 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 wait a second. Are you going, are you trying to drive us nuts? That's the whole idea. Yes, we are, we are trying that. Teacher is teaching and student is learning is not a true statement. Actually, the student ends up learning because he wants to learn. Teacher is teaching to all the kids same thing. But one student gets A plus, other student gets fail because Whoever student wants to learn, he or she can learn. Whoever student doesn't want to learn, he or she will not learn. Teacher is simply merely an instrumental cause. The student who is ready, who is eager to learn, who has inquisitiveness, he is like a sponge and he will suck all that knowledge absorbs all the knowledge and the student who doesn't want to learn no matter how much that teacher is teaching he will not learn just like a parchment paper you put on the spilled milk on the counter it will not absorb that water and milk at all so primary responsibility box stops at me one of the presidents said that so but i am responsible I am the problem. I am the. I I can do. I can make it. I can break it. It's all within me. So on that example, example we can give Marichi and Rushab Dev. You already know the story. Marichi was Rushab Dev's grandkid. Marichi's father was a, a universal monarch, Bharat Chakravarti. Rushab Dev has a hundred sons, and ninety-nine took the diksha. And they all end up getting enlightenment. Bharat also got the enlightenment. He was the son of uh, uh, Rushabdev. 
and Bharat San Marichi, he was not ready. So he did not get an enlightenment. Hey, my grandfather is a first tier thinker of this time cycle. And my parent, my, my, my father and other, my uncle, they all end up getting enlightenment. How come I don't get it? Because I'm not ready. That's what Marichi said. Who could be the better teacher than uh, uh, Rishabh Bhagwan, who will be the, who was the first Tirthankar on this time cycle? And Marichi did not get a uh, 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 self-realization. He did not get some darshan. Then, in the life of a lion, two monks they had a capacity to walk into the space. They descended and they gave discourses. And this uh, uh, lion who just had killed the deer and meat is in the mouth and the blood is coming out in the mouth and everything. And he is listening to the discourses from these two monks and he ends up getting right faith, enlightenment, self-realization. See the contrast over here. Marichi is a human being. He did not get a right faith. The lion is a subhuman species. And he ends up getting the um, um, self-realization. For Marichi, Rushabde was an instrumental cause. And for lion, only two monks are instrumental cause. Means two monks are having less category Categorically, they are less important than omniscient Lord. So with the omniscient Lord being human being, he did not get a, a, a self-realization. And on this side, he is an animal life and two uh, monks, they give discourses and he ends up getting self realization So that means he was ready for that time. Two monks were simply instrumental cause. So this is the thing, we, it has to be very well set in our mind that I am the principal cause. If I am ready, I can get Samyak Darshan. Do you want Samyak Darshan? Yes, I want Samyak Darshan. Then I have to put my effort, I have to get my eligibility and that's only the way I can get Samyak Darshan. And at the time, enlightened teachers and everybody will be in front of me and they will give the discourses and everything to me. I have to be ready first. Somebody is madly calling and I'm trying to call and they cannot answer that. You know? So just give me, that's an important thing that they, are, they want to know from me. So please bear with me. I'm sorry to bother you. Okay, so the so Marichi and Rishabdev we learned that I had to be ready to get self-realization. If I'm not ready, I won't get it, no matter what. Every substance does not cross its limitation of self-quaternary. So I have my self-quaternary, I am ready, I have decided to get the right faith, I am going to put my personal effort and appropriate instrumental cause will appear. This, this is Srimanji has written one, uh, uh, one letter, letter number 505, and it says, this is in Gujarati, the essence it says, the one that is underlined, Jivna Anadhikari Pramanatatha Satprasana Yogvina Samjatunati, means two conditions Srimanji puts over here for getting right faith or enlightenment. First, soul has to be eligible. Soul has to have his own personal effort in order. Second thing, the enlightened teacher has to be present. Two conditions have to be met. It, if only enlightened teacher is there, it won't work. Only the student is right, it won't work. They both have to be present. 
but it says scripture says if you are ready if you are eligible if you put your personal effort the instrumental force in the form of a true teachers and or scripture they will come to you you don't have to look for them in a earlier class in hindi class somebody asked me question that do i do one has to go out to look for a, 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 a teacher or not well if you're ready teacher will come to you teacher will be looking for you so you have to have your eligibility you have to have inquisitiveness you have your burning desire to get the reality to go to the center of this reality to experience a soul substance and you will get the reason when student when the student is a principal cause then the teacher is present as an instrumental cause fish is a principal cause and water is a instrumental cause rock is a principal cause to sink and water is a instrumental cause so these are the things we have to understand these are the nitty gritty basic jain principles and tactfully Srimad ji has inserted into the very first stanza to tell the people, hey, you know what? You have taken a major decision to learn Atma Siddhi. It is not a lighthearted decision. You have taken a big step to learn and amazing things will happen to you. I can assure you because this from my self experience, I'm telling you, the more the deeper you go more and more information comes out and you may have that much respect for all our uh, 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 previous acharyas who created and helped us to know all these facts if the student is ready 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 then the teacher is always present this is called principal cause, auxiliary cause relationship, or limit magnetic samban. This is a very important word that you should have to understand. Principal cause, the auxiliary cause relationship. This word, this word will come quite often in the whole Atma Siddhi. So we should get familiar with that. So let's see what it is. How does that work? This, this we are going to go in this principal cause, auxiliary cause relationship. So here. We are just taking soul and matter relationship, matter being karma. We are going to take the karma as a matter. So soul as a substance can only do two things. Either it can be in the innate state or in the deluding state. Soul independently makes the decision to go into the innate state or to go into the deluding state. Independent decision of the soul. I independently decide to be angry. Instrumental cause can be prayer, but I decided to be angry. In that state means soul's real nature is all knower soul substance, knowing, knowing, knowing. That's only the work soul is doing, and that's called its in that state. Just like the sugar, no matter where that sugar is, sugar will give sweetness, lemon will give sour taste, salt, salt will give salty taste. This is their innate state. All those matter particles, they know what is the innate state and everything. And here, I am the conscious element, highest form of a substance in this universe, and I go into the deluding state. No other substance in this world go, go, go for that deluding state except me as a soul. So I'm supposed to be in my innate state. But I go to deluding state and this is happening independently. When this is happening, then there is always a fruition of karma, old karma acting as an instrumental cause. Uh, that's, that means principal cause, auxiliary cause relationship. This is the auxiliary cause. This is the principal cause. Soul by itself decided to be in the anger, deceit, ego, greed, likes, dislike, ignorance, 
deluding state, etc., etc., they all mean the same. Altered state. Instead of my natural state, I went in my altered state by myself. And at the time, fruition of karma is simply acting as an instrumental force. What is very important? Fruition of karma. What does fruition mean? Yesterday, I was at my son's place. And he said, oh, we have lots of lemon ready. So we went there. And some of the lemons were falling down from the tree. I didn't have to bring the lemon out because they're fully ripe. And when the, the, when the fruit becomes fully ripe, it just falls off the tree. When this karma becomes ripe, they, they give fruition and they fall off the soul. For Lord, since long time that karma has association with me, but when the karma gets matured, that matured karma gives fruition and then it disappears, it gets dis dissociated from the soul. Just like lemon is falling down from the tree, this fruition of karma will give, you, give me situation and then it will just get out from me. So this is very important. Fruition of karma it comes and disappears. Lemon is ripe and falls off. So here karma becomes mature and then falls off. And at that time, just prior to falling off, it just related with this deluding state. I have deluding state and this fruition of karma is the instrumental cause for me. Both are independent event. Fruition of karma happened independently. I went to a deluding state independently. Deluding means altered state, means anger, deceit, ego, greed, likes, dislike, wrong faith, ignorance. Now, these guys only went out, so they are not associated with the, with the soul now. So that's good. They get dissociated from me. So one at a time, they are going away from me. I hope it was only that easy. Because what happens? When I'm in deluding state, that means there is a bondage of new karma occurs. And this bondage of new karma, the brand new karma, they get attracted to me because I'm in a deluding state. So, one unit is falling off here, they are falling off and few more are coming in. It's just like I took $100 as a loan from Nimisha. And after two months, three months, he said, uncle, it's about time you, you return my money. She keeps on bugging me. <laughs> well, bugging me, right? It's her own money. She's asking and I said, bugging it. Okay, all right. So now one day I said, you know what? I'll go to Shefali. Shefali, can you loan me $100? She said, okay. So she loans me $100 and I give it to Nimisha. My debt is gone from Nimisha, right? But in fact, my $100 debt is still existing with Shefali right now. Similarly, some unit of karma dissipated, but more came in. So in grand total, I acquired a lot more karma than what they got dissipated. This is a positive cash flow in terms of economics. Positive karma flow within me. I'm loaded with more karma right now. Now this bondage of, bondage of new karma, they go into the hibernation, they go uh, hibernation. And once they are maturing, then they will be the fruition. And at that time I'll be in deluding state. And then that they, they will get out. Fruition of karma and get out. And new karma will get. This kind of circle keeps on going and going and going and going forever with me. If we look carefully in this whole scenario, that the two players are there. One is a soul on this side, and one is a karma in the form of old karma and new karma. 
these guys have no brain. They are brain dead. They are matter objects. They don't know anything. But only the uh, only the knowledge has is this guy. So I want to get do uh, get out of this sort of vicious circle. Who is feeding this vicious circle? This guy. Deluding state is a main feeder because when deluding state is there, there's a fruition of karma is there. The new karma are coming, and this is what the deluding karma is an instigator for the whole vicious circle what can i do here if i don't go in the vicious deluding state if i remain in my innate state alone then that's it this circle has no feeding and then this circle will fall off uh, let me see oh wait how do i have a gas and oh yeah so if I remain in deluding in in a state, then there is no deluding state, and that means the root cause is not there, and rest of the thing will die down automatically. You are given X, and you have been said, take care of this tree. I want to remove this tree. And somebody, some wiser one will say, well, I, I, I don't have much time, so I will just cut the one branch of the tree. What will happen? That branch will regrow again and again and again. But if you go to the roots of the roots of the tree, you put that axe and cut the whole tree from the root, tree will fall off. Few days, the green leaves will be there. But then later on, there is no nourishment, and so they will also die down. So it is my responsibility if I go here, then there is no deluding state, and I can remain independent. That's what we mean to say independence here. So, soul and karma have associative relationship as we saw it. They have principal cause, auxiliary cause relationship. For me to speak is a principal cause. For you to listen is an auxiliary cause. Looking other way around, to listen is your principal cause. For me to speak, I'm the auxiliary cause. So it works from both ways. I could be principal cause if I consider from myself. You could be principal cause if we consider from your angle. So principal cause, auxiliary cause relationship, nimit nimitic symbol has to be understood. When soul with his personal effort ends up with some acts, then the karma fruition simply acts as an instrument of cause. When soul with a personal effort, altered effort, and end up doing deluding state, then karma will act as an instrument of cause. Its presence is important. Karma fruition instrument of cause presence is important, but does not take part in the action. It just its own job, job, fruition, get out. That's it. it karma cannot say, hey, soul, do this way or do that way. It is soul's problem. They just give fruition and get out. This thing is extremely important for understanding. And if we can understand, then half of the Jain philosophy, we already can understand very, very well, very quickly. When an act happens, there are five. Now, now, over here, we said that act is happening instrumental cause and principal cause and everything in actuality what happens when an act occurs any act i'm getting angry i'm getting greedy i'm getting selfies or i'm getting knowledge of my soul i'm getting self-experiencing any activity there are actually five inseparable multitudes have to be present they are called five somewhere because sumaji has tactfully hidden those information here 
what it means phi inseparable multiple you and they, any act happening this five guys has to be present they have to be present and they are instrumental cause in each state destiny time of attainment and personal effort these five guys have to be present for an act to occur for example i'm getting angry right now so if my personal effort i decided to become angry right now then anger producing material karma came in fruition over here in a state i was supposed to be in a state means of my, my eternal soul substance can have a personal effort in the form of getting angry it was my destiny to be angry at this time and it, it happened because this was the right time for me to become angry and those are the five things present that's why i became angry now i had personal effort i had a self-realization then the uh, uh omission lord holy scripture and enlightened uh, teachers they are acting as an instrument to cause their presence is important it's occurring from me as an innate state i'm the soul and i'm full of knowledge and i'm full of consciousness and that's why this personal effort are gaining in me any results in the form of self-realization it was supposed to happen today my destiny was there today to get the right faith and that's why today was a time real time and that's why i got the uh, uh, enlightenment now if you look at this picture these five guys they are independent now what do i have control only this guy this is only the guy i have control over it i decide whether i should put my personal effort or not i decide whether i would like to alter personal effort or right personal effort when i do that other guys time occurs by itself destiny occurs by itself instrumental cause comes by itself in its state means me I'm, I'm i'm the soul substance that is there so i have a control on the situation you want to become a physician you started your personal effort not yesterday not last year it started 20 years back 15 years back from the grade school high school middle school undergrad and all those things when you did then one day you got an admission hey you get admission in a medical school the personal effort has given fruition but for that thing all throughout the life you made the personal effort right faith enlightenment samyak darshan it will occur within one samay but for that thing i have to give lifelong ex exercise for that in the olympic i'm on the splinter run i run for eight second ten second or god knows what was those millisecond they use and everything that thing happens just like that but to prepare for the the athlete is putting hours and hours and days and weeks and months and years for the training so personal efforts are my control this is included in this uh um, 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 simergy's first stanza now last part sri sadguru guru bhagwan what does that mean sri means we can just give the the, the uh, when we are give it respect to somebody we call it sri so sri so the guru the enlightened teacher and he is like a god so sri sadguru the guru bhagwan means the enlightened teacher is considered as a god for me that's a one way of looking at it but other 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 meaning of sri means the scripture sadguru means an enlightened true teacher and bhagwan means a omniscient lord 
So, omniscient Lord, holy scripture, and enlightened true teachers, Dev Sastra Guru, they are the best instrumental cause for me to obtain right faith. I want to have right faith. These three guys have to be present. But you said Mahavir was 2500 years back. He's not there. We are in this land of away from the uh, India and everything. So where can I get this Sadhguru, for example? But the scriptures are there. I work with the scriptures, and scriptures are <coughs> important for me to understand. Any questions coming? Yes? Okay, all right. Okay, so now Sri Sadhguru Bhagavan, we are just going to describe, describe this. Sri means scripture, means a scripture. In the scripture, enlightened teacher or omniscient Lord gets included. In a, a enlightened true teacher, the scripture and omniscient lords are included. In the omniscient lord, the scripture and enlightened teachers are included. Means, when you say Sri Sadhguru Bhagwan or scripture, enlightened teacher or omniscient lord, <coughs> either of the thing, three things, either of the three things presence will act as an instrumental cause for me. Scriptures are there all the time with me. I, in my home, the books are there. So why did I open those books? If I open, then I can learn. If I don't open, I won't learn. There, you go on the internet, the enlightened teachers are giving messages, discourses. If I listen, I can understand. Omniscient Lord is not there, so we don't have to consider uh, he's not there, he's not there right now. So Sri Sadhguru Bhagavan means all these three entities that we have to think about. It. Now, one uh, now we are coming to the last stretch. One understands due to self only. At that time, appropriate teacher is also present with right faith originating, infinite attribute ends up with the purity modes. The respect attribute also becomes pure. Student is expressing his gratitude to the learned teacher. So when when it says samaja vyote padanamu means uh, uh, the student is getting right faith, and at the time he just shows his respect. He shows his gratitude to the omniscient Lord, true teachers, and the scriptures. That's why yesterday when we did puja, we did Jinwani Mata Puja because it was Mother's Day. Jinwani means the scripture is called Mother and Omniscient Lord is called Father. So scripture is giving that much amazing amount of respect. Each time we read the scripture, we have to show utmost care towards the scripture. So that's what uh, um, um, respect is showing. Now, these two last words, samajavina and a samajavyo, means what does those two words mean? To know means I know by myself, I know by my own personal effort. Today, right now, you had a choice to sit down and do something else, but you decided that I would like to know. <coughs> so that was the thing that you had decided. That was the thing you decided. And that's why you are called absolute point of view. To know by myself is absolute point of view. One who gives knowledge, one who teaches me, he's called conventional point of view. And over here, it explains the nature of partial point of view by absolute point of view, conventional point of view. Jesarup Samajavina, when I did not understand, means I have capacity to know, but I did not learn. That means absolute point of view is my own fault. When I really, really ready to learn, then true teachers were present 
and so they are called they are called conventional point of view so in this way simajya said two things are important for the jain philosophy to grab to understand absolute point of view and conventional point of view actually on that topic when i took it the topic we had gone for 6 7 8 10 classes on that if the time comes we will go through all those thing in great detail right now we just say whatever i do it whatever i am the principal cause that's called absolute point of view when i am the principal cause any associated thing present they are called conventional point of view both the things need to be understand because it says the train to go you need because of the tracks two 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 tracks are required when the tracks are present with two parallel metal rods are there then and then train can go on it so we have to make sure the for the track two tracks are required for train to run on it similarly absolute point of view and conventional point of view both are required you have it's like a weighing scale you put feet over two feet on two sides and balance it out if you do that then you are on real pathway yes i'm talking to you lots of theoretical thing right now but all those thing one at a time will unfold as we start as we go detail into atmasya disaster so those are the thing that we have to understand world moves on two tracks whole jain scriptures are divided into two partial point of view absolute point of view and conventional point of view absolute point of view show the nature of the eternal soul conventional point of view shows the importance of the or importance of the true teachers and scriptures and omniscient lord so this way we are going to learn more and more at least it just tells us in depth of this first stanza alone in this week one person met me and said hey you are going too slow can you just go fast how can i go fast when so much detail is there you cannot skip the thing. you can go quickly you can recite from atmasya the sastra in about 20 minutes 30 minutes 40 minutes it's useless you have to you have to get the depth of it you have to understand the real meaning of it then it becomes enjoyment then it gives personal pleasure to us so those are the things and i'll open the things for the questions and here we are end with the, we have ended the first stanza over here any questions so far Yes. Anything. Anybody. Okay. If there are no question, then probably we'll just do the uh, closing. Okay. Jisva rupa samajya vina pamyo dukha anam. समझाते पद नमो श्री सद गुरु भगवान परम पुरुष प्रभु सद गुरु परम ज्ञान सुख राम जेने आप सद प्रणाम देह चिता जेनी दशा वरते देहाती ते ज्ञानी न चरण माहो वंदन अगणी हे परम कृपा देव जन्म जरादी सर्व दुख नो अत्यंत सही करना नमस्कार करू छु आप परम भक्ति विकलात पुरुष न मूल धर्म उपासना मारा देवी से भाव पर्यत अखंड जागृत रहो एट मांगु छु ते सफल रहो ओम शांति 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 जय जिनेन्द्र मिच्छा मी दुकरम थैंक यू वेरी मच जय जिनेन्द्र थैंक्स जय जिनेन्द्र जय जिनेन्द्र